In this lesson, we're going to talk about radical equations. So basically, a radical equation is an equation with a radical symbol in it. And here I have four easy steps to solve a radical equation. And if you follow these, you'll be, you'll be good to go. Step one is going to be to isolate the radical that has the variable. So you're looking for the specific variable just like you are in a regular equation. Then step two is going to be to square both sides of the equation. To eliminate a radical sign, you have to square it. And I'll show you that in some of these examples that we're going to do. Step three is solve the problem. And then there's a very important step, step four. And this step is going to be check for extraneous solutions. So an extraneous solution is kind of an abstract concept in Algebra 1. And you're really going to expand on this in Algebra 2. And um, we're going to look at it a little bit now. And then we're also going to look at it a little bit later when we talk about quadratics. And we're actually going to return to this very topic a little bit later in the year. So uh, but for right now, we're just touching on this idea of an extraneous solution. And what it is, is it's a solution to an equation that emerges from the process of solving the problem but it's not a valid solution to the problem. So basically, at the, at the end of a problem, you're gonna get an answer like x equals four. But when you substitute that number back into the original equation, it's not going to work. So it's going to be kind of an awkward um, thing for us, but I think we'll make it through. The other thing we need to know in this unit um, is this thing called a principal root. So we know that when you're given a perfect square number, like for example, 16, we know that not only four times four will give you 16, but negative four times negative four will also give you 16. So we are going to talk about both the positive and the negative root, but we're gonna hold off on that just a little bit. And today we're just gonna focus on the principal root, which is the positive number. So in our case, it would be four. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple radical equations. Okay, it says determine the solutions to the radical equation and then check for extraneous solutions. So I'm gonna do both of those pieces here for you. All right, the first thing we wanna do is isolate the radical that has the variable. So you can see here that I have a radical sign with a variable u. So I wanna isolate that. So it kind of looks like an absolute value problem and if you remember an absolute value problem, I would want to eliminate that three that's next to the radical. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. That's gonna leave me with u minus seven underneath the radical equals 11. Okay, that's, um, that's our step one here. Now, what we wanna do now is get rid of that square root symbol because we need to get inside the radical to get the u. So in order to do that, we have to, we have to take the whole side and we have to square it. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So whatever you do to that left side with the variable, you're also gonna have to do to the other side. So what that does is that two, that, that square, is going to make the radical sign cancel out so that you're just left with u minus seven. And of course, that's going to equal 121. And now I just have a simple one-step equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish solving this and I get that u is equal to 121. I'm sorry, 128. Okay, now that I've got u equals 128, I need to check to see if there's an extraneous solution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that number and I'm gonna substitute it back into the original. So I'm gonna show you step by step how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put 128 minus seven underneath the radical and then outside minus three equals Eight. So I'm just going to keep simplifying this down. I have radical 121 minus 3 is equal to 8. 11 minus 3 is equal to 8. And you can see that indeed this solution does work into this original problem. So therefore, u equals 128 is not an extraneous solution. It's just a normal solution. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I was doing before, and I'm gonna go ahead and start by subtracting nine from both sides. All right, if I do that, I'm gonna get negative four is equal to, and then I'm left with x minus eight. Okay, 
Now I want to eliminate that radical so I can get to my x. So I'm going to square not only the right-hand side, but I'm also going to square the left-hand side. If I do that, that's going to leave me with 16 is equal to x minus 8 because that 2, that power, and that radical are going to cancel out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simply add 8 to both sides. And that's going to give me x is equal to 24. Okay, so there is my solution. Now I, what I want to do is I want to go and just test it to make sure it's not extraneous. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute it back into that original problem. So 5 is equal to, I'm sorry, I wanted to change my pen color there. There we go. 5 is equal to 9 plus root 24 minus 8. There we go. All right, I'm going to keep going with this. 5 equals 9 plus, and then I have the square root of 16. Now I have 5 equals 9 plus 4. Yikes. 5 equals 13. We can see that that is not a solution. Those, that does not work. So what it's saying here that x equals 24, it's a special type of solution. And the way we're going to indicate that is we're just going to write E with an S, saying that that solution is extraneous. All right, let's try a couple more and see if we end up with any more extraneous. Okay. All right, this one is a little bit different because I don't need to isolate anything I, because I don't need to add or subtract. It's already taken care of for us. So right now, all we want to do is start by step two, squaring both sides. Okay, now you need to be really careful here. We talked about this way back in unit one, but you have to make sure that you square and you put that negative 12 in parentheses because negative 12 squared in parentheses and negative 12 squared without parentheses are two different numbers. So be really careful there. So that's going to leave me with 2x plus 8 is equal to 144. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. And that's going to leave me with 2x is equal to 136. And I'll finish it off by dividing by 2. x is equal to 68. Okay, so that is my solution to my equation. But now I need to go ahead and I need to test for an extraneous solution, see if I have one. All right, let's go ahead and pop him in there. So I have 2 times 68 plus 8 equals negative 12. Okay, if I just kind of take my time here, I'm going to go ahead and do each chunk separately. 2 times 68 is going to give me 136 plus 8 equals negative 12. And then I have 144 equals negative 12. You can see where this is going. 12 is equal to negative 12. Well, 12 is not equal to negative 12. So this solution just happens to be an extraneous solution as well. Okay, and I think I have a couple more here for you. Let's take a look at this next one. The next one, you can see that now I have radicals on both sides. So I need to start off um, by squaring both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to square the left, and then I'm going to square the right. Don't forget about the little 2 right here. We need to square him as well. The left side's easy. I'm just going to eliminate that radical, and it's going to leave me with u plus 9. But the right-hand side, I do have that 2 out front, so I need to raise him to the second power first. So 2 squared is going to leave me with a 4. And then there's always some confusion here about what's the operation happening right here. We know that that's multiplication, so I'm actually going to write a little multiplication symbol there. And then what am I left with? u plus 3. Well, u plus 3 is a quantity. It's, it's a chunk. So I'm actually going to say that u plus 3 kind of just goes together like that, which is actually the distributive property. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to distribute him. And I'm going to say 4u plus 3. You can see where this led us. Now we just have an equation with variables on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve this problem. So I have 9 equals 3u plus 3 
And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. 6 is equal to 3u. And I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3. So u is equal to 2. Okay. Now what we want to do here is check for our extraneous solution. So I'm going to go change my pen color. And let's go see if we have an extraneous solution here. I just noticed here that I did some distributing wrong. So I'm actually, you probably caught that. I'm just going to go back up and modify it right here. It's not a big problem. Hopefully you didn't make that problem that I did. And obviously 4 times 3 is 12. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that modification. And let's go ahead and keep solving here. So all we did was uh, subtract u from both sides. And that's going to leave me with 9 equals 3u plus 12. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides. Cool. So that's going to leave me with negative 3 equal to 3u. And I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. u is equal to negative 1. Okay. u is equal to negative 1. There's my solution. So let's go ahead. Okay. So let's go ahead and check our extraneous, for any extraneous solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and pop him in there. I'm going to say negative 1 plus 9 is equal to 2 root negative 1 plus 3. Great. So here I have root 8 is equal to 2 root 2. Now right now, it doesn't look like root 8 is equal to 2 root 2. But let's go ahead and just break down root 8. If I break that down, that's going to leave me with root 4 times root 2. And I'm going to break that down into 2 root 2. So these are actually equal to each other, which means that my answer of u equals negative 1 is not an extraneous solution. It's just a normal solution. Okay, I think I have one more here for you. Okay. Now I have um, the square root of x to the fourth over 16 equals 16. So I already have my variable isolated underneath my radical. So I'm going to go ahead and start by taking the square of each side. Start there. Feel free to use your calculators if you're not sure exactly what 16 squared is, but you might have that memorized. So that's going to equal x to the fourth over 16 and that's going to be equal to 256. I'm going to go ahead and solve this like I normally would by multiplying both sides by that 16. And that's going to leave me with x to the fourth equals 4096. OK, so now this is kind of a strange thing. I have x to the fourth equals 4,096. Now, normally, if this was an x squared, that would be pretty easy. Something like that, we would just take the square root. But since it's not a square root, or it's not a square, it's a fourth, we actually have to take the fourth root. It's kind of an interesting concept. I have to take the fourth root of both sides. So when I do that to the left side, I'm just left with x to the fourth. I'm sorry, just x. Now, when I do it to the right side, let me go ahead and erase that, whoops. When I do that to the right side, you might not know that the, what the fourth root of 4096 is. So I do have this little calculator tip here for you that will help you find the fourth root. So if you go to your graph and calculator and you click the math button and you choose option number five, that will give you um, an op opportunity to plug in a four into that um, little spot. So basically what it'll look like in your calculator is like this. It'll be a little box and then it'll be a square root and you're going to put a four right in that little box and then you're going to fill it in with 4,096. Now if you have a calculator and for some reason it's not giving you that little box, another way to do it is like this. Press your math button and then, um, I'm sorry, before you click your math button, put, push the number four in, then choose math, and then choose option five. That might work for you as well. Uh, but either way, 
your answer will end up being that x is equal to 8. Okay, so now that we have our solution to this problem, you guessed it, we do have to check for extraneous solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and test that right down here since I have room here. And I'm going to say 8 to the 4th power over 16 is equal to 16. So to do 8 to the 4th power in your calculator, that's actually going to be 8 caret 4. And the caret is right underneath the clear button. So I'm going to do 8 caret 4, and that's going to leave me with 4,096. And I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 16. <clears throat> so that's going to leave me with... <clears throat> The square root of 256 equals 16, which obviously, I'm running out of room here, but 16 is equal to 16, and therefore, our answer of x equals 8 is not an extraneous solution. It's just a regular solution. Okay, and that is all we have here for solving radical equations.